In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a GUI appear on screen when you do something such as stepping on a brick or walking up to something. So let's begin. So it's very simple how we do this, and it involves a script on the server, a script on the client, and a remote event. Now, this is all because of filtering enabled. Now, if you're not too uh, sure about how this works, don't worry. We will explain it as we go along. But basically, what it means is that the code that we're going to write to detect when the brick gets touched is actually going to be running on the Roblox server. And the GUIs actually live on the client. So the client is going to be the player that the GUI is going to show to. And the server is where our code is stored and where it's going to run. And we can't just access a player's um, player GUI from the server because filtering enabled stops us from doing this because it also helps us stop the exploiters. So we have to use a remote event. And what a remote event does is it's placed in replicated storage, which is a place in the game where both the server and client can see things, but only the server can make changes. So what we can do is when we walk up to a brick, we can fire an event and we can pick up that event on the client. And when that event is picked up, we can open up the GUI. Sounds a little bit confusing, but hopefully it will make sense as we go along. So I'm just gonna make this GUI invisible for now by setting the frames um, visible property to false. You could also set the screen GUI's enabled property to false if you want to make the entire GUI invisible. But I'm going to then insert a script into server script service, and I'm gonna create an event. And this event will detect when a player steps on a brick. So we'll say game, dot workspace dot part dot touched colon connect function then we write player in here so our player argument this is going to be the player that sorry we should say hit because it's going to be the brick that touches our part so the the other brick that touches it we then have to actually see if the part that touched the part <laughs> the part that touched our brick over here it, the thing that touches it, we need to check if it's an actual body part of a player's character, or we can just check that it is an actual player. So to do that, we can say if game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent, because if it is a body part that touches the part, then its parent is going to be the character object of the player, and then we can use this very nifty function, which will basically tell us whether it is an actual player in the game, and if it is then we can fire our remote event and our remote event is going to tell the player to make the GUI visible. So we need to create that remote event. So we're going to say remote event, put it in replicated storage. I'm going to call it show GUI just so that we're all organized and we know what everything does. Then I can say game dot replicated storage dot show GUI colon fire client. And what this is going to do is it's going to send a request to a specific client, a specific player in the game. So we know the player and we can get their player object by using this line again. So we just put that in there. This function here, it returns the player object. And in this, in this if statement, if it does return a player object, we know that it's an actual player in the game. So we are sending to this player a request to show our GUI. So what we then do is we now need to do a bit of client coding. So we've done the server coding because we're detecting whether the part has been touched on the server and the server is owned and controlled by Roblox and it's where all of our server scripts will go. But then our client scripts are for things like GUIs and tools because the reason we have client scripts is because there's going to be lots of players in the game and each player might have a different GUI. They might have a different GUI open at a certain time. So different players will need um, client scripts so that we can control them all individually. So let's insert a local script in this screen GUI. And we need to set up an event for when our show GUI remote event is fired. So we can say game dot replicate storage dot show GUI dot on client event. So when we fire client, we fire client here, and then we use on client event to pick up 
when we have fired client from the server. Colon connect function. And then we add this end in here. And what's going to happen is any code in between these two lines is going to run when this remote event is fired from the server. And so when it is fired, we want to make the, the GUI uh, visible. So we can say script dot parent dot um, frame dot visible equals not. Well, we could set it to true, but if I fired it again, I'd then want it to set it to false. I'd want it, I'd want it to make invisible if I fired it again. So just a quick way to turn it off and on is to just write equals not script or parent or frame or visible. And what it's going to do is it's going to set it to the opposite of what it currently is. So if the GUI is currently invisible and then we get a and then we fire this event, well the opposite of being invisible is visible. So when we say not, it's just saying the opposite of what what it currently is. So if visible is currently false, we're going to set visible to true. And if visible is true, we're then going to set it to false. So let's test this out. And we're going to head up to the brick. We're going to touch it. And boom, it appears. And it says, I want to appear when you touch a brick. So my GUI has um, become visible. But then when I jump away from it, I'm actually touching it again. Because I'm touching it again, and it fires the remote event. But you can see it's sort of, you know, it keeps flashing on the screen. And the reason for this is because the brick I can touch it multiple times with multiple body parts so it will fire the remote event lots of times and so what it does is it's this code is firing multiple times for each body part so it's going to just keep setting it on and off and on and off so we need to have a cooldown so it's not constantly firing this event so we can make a debounce and a debounce just prevents us from firing the show GUI event um, all the time so it's kind of like a cooldown so we can create our cooldown I'm going to call it debounce and then set it to false I'm going to say if if not debounce then and then we're going to say debounce equals true then we're going to have our code to check if it's a player and to fire the event we're going to have a wait two seconds then we're going to set debounce to false again. So this is a variable, this debounce. And what, we, what we're saying here is if debounce is false, then we're allowed to run this code. But if it's true, we don't want to run this code. So only when debounce is set to false will we let this code run. So when we do let it run, we immediately set debounce to true. So it can't be triggered. So when this part dot touch is triggered again, we can't fire the code for a second time. And we wait two seconds and then we set debounce to false. So we're basically saying that there's a cooldown period of two seconds. So you can only step on this brick every two seconds and, and make it fire the code. Because we've got all these different body parts here that could be touching the brick at the same time. We don't want it to keep turning the GUI on and off really, really quickly. So if we step on the brick, there we go. And if we step on it again, it's going to disappear after two seconds. Actually, I might have done something wrong here. Let's see. Oh, no. Seems that we did it okay. I think if we make this anchored and we set Cancoli to true and we make it look like an actual button here, I think that would be better. Let's try that. Wait for it to load. And if we step on the brick, it appears. If we step on it for a second time, it disappears. So there we go. We have just created a part which will make a GUI appear when we click on it. And it will also disappear when we click on it again. If you didn't want it to disappear when you click on it again, you could just set this to true and then have like a wait. So after a certain amount of time, it will disappear again. You can add a line which sets it to false afterwards. So let's try this one more time. So the whole point of using the remote event is because we can't just find the player and disable and turn the GUI on and off from the server script because filtering enabled, which is designed to stop players from uh, changing things on the server, 
basically stops us from being able to access things in a player from, from a server script. So we have to use a remote event to communicate between the server and the client. So when we step on the brick, the server is actually detecting that, but then we have to make a request to the client to show our GUI because the GUIs are managed on the client and this part and the script is managed on the server. So the remote event is kind of like the man in the middle and it allows us to um, to show the GUI when we step on a brick. So there we go. That's how you make a GUI appear when you step on a brick. Hope it was useful. If it was, please like the video, share it with anyone you know. Please subscribe to my channel for more Roblox scripting videos. I have hundreds of videos teaching how to make great Roblox games and make Robux. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.